Hi, and good Tuesday and good October to you. It's the first day of the 10th month. It's much more like the middle of August. Wow, another summer day is upon us. Tomorrow's daytime high is even bumped up a degree or so from this time last evening. We still have a cold front that's coming through towards the latter part of your week. It knocks temperatures right in the head and down about 20 degrees from one day to the next. No showers or precipitation at all associated with this change as of right now in this cold front but definitely some welcome cooler air. We'll talk about that in just a few moments, another day, another record set. You know how it is as far as heat is concerned. Our top story tonight will be a focus on test scores, Kentucky's new accountability system, test scores of which were released to the media late last week, and we are about allowed to take those public today. And we'll take a look at each individual school in McGoffin County, speak with our school superintendent, compare McGoffin, Johnson, and Morgan briefly with much more to come in this week's edition of the Sagersville Independent on that topic as our editor Heather Oney is still working quite hard on that story. As always, test scores, a lot of information to digest. And of course, we have a new system. So essentially everyone is starting over and that includes the media as well. A couple of things before we get to that, a new calendar and a whole lot of other things happening. And let's go ahead and throw this out there and allow you to make your own judgment and opinion. Of course, that's what we do with everything. But in regards to eating red meat, it has forever, well, you know, in some ways forever, for many, many years, been linked to cancer and heart disease. No one's really contesting that. However, does not eating it make the well, does it make the juice worth the squeeze, so to speak? Uh, there's a group of international researchers who say, maybe not. A series of papers published yesterday in which the researchers say that the increased risks are very small and uncertain and that cutting back likely won't be worth it for people who enjoy eating red meat. Now, of course, as you can well imagine, uh, those findings were immediately rebutted by U.S. scientists and others uh, who are trying to address the issue, saying, indeed, it is dangerous. But um, the new report says that, well, they're not saying red meat and processed meats like hot dogs and bacon are healthy for you they're just saying that staying away from them is not necessarily going to do you any good and they say that based on their analysis that a panel of the invitational rather international researchers said that people do not have to cut back for health reasons but they do know that these findings uh, are still a, a bit weak and they they don't take into account other factors such as the animal welfare uh, facts and the toll that meat production has on the environment. And there were 14 panelists on this study, three of which uh, said that they were still in support of reducing red and processed meats. But authors and a co-author of this study says that indeed cutting back might not do many people any good to the point that they suggest keep doing what you're doing, whether that's avoiding red meat altogether, eating how much you are, or whatever that just Continue to do what you do. Take that into consideration. If you've been looking for an excuse to eat your red meat, well, you officially got one with this latest study. A woman from Pikeville and related to a Georgetown address as well who claimed the life via a car accident of her own sister and two former McGoffin County sisters was in court earlier today where the judge in the case in Lexington ordered time to be given for a competency hearing. Still in a wheelchair for the injuries she sustained in the fatal collision, 42-year-old Tammy Rodriguez made a court appearance just earlier today before a judge that did allow for a 30-day continuance. That continuance to give doctors a chance to have a psychological evaluation done for attorneys in her case. She is due back in court in approximately one month in the first week of November. Of course, Rodriguez is the one accused of the deadly crash that killed a total of three women. Her own sister, who was a passenger in her pickup truck, and then two former Sagersville sisters, 26-year-old Taylor Blevins and her sister, 20-year-old Caitlin Bailey. They were in the vehicle that she struck head-on. Another vehicle was also struck, but that individual or individuals was not seriously injured. Rodriguez, though, was running from authorities in Winchester to Lexington, driving her F-150 in the northbound lanes of I-75 after she made a U-turn right before striking the two vehicles. 
She was charged with DUI initially. That was her fifth offense, also driving on no operator's license. Now upgraded charges include three counts of murder. When we come back, a whole lot of information, perhaps not as much as what will be in this week's edition of the Sagittarius Independent because it's an all-important topic, but a lot of information on test scores released for the McGoffin County, Johnson County, and other school districts. Stay tuned. It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with Flavor-X. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great, and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering. There's and yours for free and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Right now, for pennies on the dollar, a huge selection of like-new laptop computers, a fresh stock of video games, the Cadillac of dog tracking and training systems, new hunting rifles, accessories, and ammo. And they always stock, buy, sell, and pawn gold and silver coins and jewelry with a new selection just in at Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville, 349 Pawn. We have finally done it. After years and years of extensive testing, we not only invented the chicken sandwich, we have perfected the chicken sandwich. Come and try it and love it with a big, famous dip, breast strip, pickles and mayonnaise, or however you like it fixed. And if you like, make it a double. Just make your way to Lee's to get it and grab a cookie while you're there. At your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where even our ice is famous. Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. Now it's time to talk about test scores for McGoffin County and the surrounding counties as well, with much more to come with a bigger write-up in this week's edition of the Sagersville Independent. But it's a lot of information to take in. We've had a few days to do so, and we will talk about some of those scores tonight in regards to Kentucky's new accountability system. It's established on a five-star rating method, five being the highest, one being the lowest. Actually, there were 56 schools throughout the entire state that received or were awarded a five-star rating. 89 received the lowest and one star. Lumping the entire state all together, the majority of public schools do fall right in the middle or in that three-star range. This new accountability scoring system is actually the result of federal law passed in 2015 requiring states to update their accountability testing systems. It's taken the past two years for the transition period. This is now the first year that schools are actually using it. So certainly a learning curve, not just for schools, but for media as well. And a lot of information to digest in its first year of the new five-star system. It is one that, or in which Kentucky schools earned a final score based on their students' test results in reading and mathematics and in other categories, but reading and math carrying the most weight in regards to scores as they assess Kentucky's elementary, middle, and high schools. The maximum score which can be obtained is 188. The lowest, uh, rather that's the maximum school score rather for middle and elementary schools which are 
graded in the same fashion. High schools are graded in a separate fashion. Their maximum score is 123, and no schools got anywhere close, I don't believe, to the maximum or the highest possible score. If you look at the highest and the lowest in elementary, middle, and high schools, for example, uh, as for the top elementary schools, there was only one in the eastern Kentucky area at all that made that list, a short list of about 15 schools. That was Valley Elementary in the Pike School District. For the bottom elementary schools, all 15 or so were in the Jefferson County School District. For top middle schools, Blaine Elementary in Lawrence and Valley Elementary in the Pike School District made that short list. Perry County had Viper Elementary as well on that list. In the bottom middle schools, Knott County, Cordia made the bottom list, 44.1, their uh, final score. For the top high schools, Pikeville Independent, uh, Pikeville had an 81.9, the only school in the Eastern Kentucky area I see making in the top high school list. Bottom high schools, just one in the uh, relative vicinity. That was in Knott County at Cordia for a 35. Point seven. With that, let's go now and take a closer look at McGoughlin and Johnson schools. We'll also make a, a bit of a comparison and speak with Superintendent of Schools Scott Hilton as they've now gone over the scores. And we'll see where each of five McGoughlin County schools fell in the one to five star category. Here in McGoughlin County, beginning with the McGoughlin County High School and the Harold Whitaker Middle School, we placed both of these together in the same discussion because they both were ranked two-star schools out of a five-star system. With the McGoughlin County High School and its 575 students last year and the Harold Whitaker Middle School with its 317 students last year in seventh and eighth grades. Attendance rates still a big factor in a lot of things and that of course includes education with the McGough County High School having 85.3 for their overall attendance rate the Harold Whitaker Middle School closer to the 90 percentile but the 90 percentile still a target area for all schools to try to improve attendance rates as far as economically disadvantaged students and not economically disadvantaged students, numbers are pretty consistent throughout the school system, with the high school and the middle school both at right around 77% considered to be economically disadvantaged and the remaining 23% not. As for the middle school, in all five testing areas, all scores were below the state average, while at the McGough County High School, three of those scoring areas were below the state average. Well, when we look at our middle and high school, um, our middle school uh, has basically uh, scored the same way as our elementary schools. Uh, within looking at these test scores, you got to understand that there's weighted uh, amounts of scores for each area is weighted a little differently. Like our reading and math is weighted a little bit more than uh, so uh, some of the others like writing and, and science and things of that nature. But uh, reading and math, when you look at middle school and high school, was a concern for us as a district. Uh, their proficiency level wasn't where uh, I thought or the principals and I kind of got together that, that was an area that we needed to improve on, and it's still an area that we need to improve on. But uh, taking into consideration that this is a, um, a test that uh, we're trying to figure out how it's uh, scored and weighted uh, and, and, and things of that nature, we did okay compared to some of the surrounding communities and counties, but it's not where we want to be at those two schools. Now, we're not the bottom. Uh, by no means, but we still got a lot of work to do at those schools, and uh, I'm proud of the work that's taking place. Uh, by far, our elementary schools did okay. Uh, I actually did great, but our middle school and high school did a good job as well, and I don't want our parents and our teachers and staff to think that uh, they're doing horribly. They're not. They're doing okay. Uh, they're just areas that we need to improve on, and uh, when you go into our schools, you'll see teaching taking place at the schools, and, and I'm proud of that. But we got to continue to work harder and smarter, and uh, our focuses have to be on certain areas where we're having some issues. Next, let's go on to McGoughlin County's three elementary schools, and we'll begin with the Sagersville Grade School, which received a three-star rating. North and South McGoughlin Elementary is receiving a four-star rating out of five. However, Superintendent Helton does explain that the Sagersville grade school score can be just a bit deceiving and that their large amount of growth last year led to them not showing as much this year. 
essentially being just a fraction of a point away from being a four-star school. So for grade school, he was within a few percentage points, uh, a tenth of a point to, of being a four-star. Uh, he actually had higher scores than the other two elementaries in most of the areas, but his math scores from the previous year were so high that he had a decline in math scores this year. He went down 6% uh, in his math scores, so that reduced his growth rate and that impacted his overall score. So he was just below south and north as far as they were four stars and he was a high three star. And when, when all the data comes out, they rank these star ratings. There's high, medium, and low. Uh, he was definitely one of those high ranking, high ranking schools as far as a three star. But his area, it, he, his last year's test scores, his writing was a big concern and uh, they increased their writing scores by 45 percent this year so you know we've got to make sure we stay focused on all the areas and i'm not saying that they did that that, that they neglected anything but it, it's a good learning uh, lesson for everybody uh, this first go around with the star ratings you just can't focus on one area you got to be spread out you got to focus on all the areas but if you're going to score well you've got to do well on those higher weighted areas as for North McGoffin Elementary and South McGoffin Elementary, attendance rates to the bottom of your screen up close to 95.5% at North, lower for South McGoffin at 88.1, North McGoffin with 413 students, and South with 181, a little less than half that. But both receiving four out of five stars. North and South, they, uh, they ended up being four-star schools, but just like I said about the grade school, you can put those three schools together because their, their scores were within one percentage point of each other. There's not a lot of difference between those three schools. Uh, they had a cut score is how they came up. The state had a cut score that they set for a four-star, and just so happens uh, the start of grade school fell like five or six-tenths of a point behind that cut score. So basically, they're the three schools working at the same. But we've got to continue to share ideas and work together as a district. And we've got to work better uh, transitioning our students from the sixth grade to the middle school and working on preparing them at the middle school age level. Nothing against our sixth grade, but when you get to the middle school, you're changing uh, the environment. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a big change for our students. And, and the same thing is changing from middle school to high school. When they come out of eighth grade going into ninth grade, it's a whole new world. So we've got to do a pretty good job, better job of transitioning activities and making sure our students are ready for those transitions. Backing back out of the scores, so to speak, and looking at school districts comparatively, here you have Johnson, McGoffin, and Morgan counties. You have Johnson County, which had their elementary schools as a whole in a four-star rating, their middle school in a four-star rating, and their high school in a two-star rating. McGoffin County, as we've already covered, had four-star rating elementary schools, a two-star rating for their middle school, and a two-star rating for their high school. Morgan County consistently across the board at a three-star school district three for elementary middle and the high school categories you've got johnson county with about 3500 students mcgoffin county with just under 2000 and mcgoffin and morgan county very similar in the fact they have basically the same county size and makeup and essentially within five students the same number of students in the school district attendance rates you have johnson county at 92.6 and on the other side of your screen morgan county at 93 and mcgoffin county closer to 90. With all schools, I can assure you wishing they had better attendance rates. For more on the McGoffin County scores and how we compare, be sure to pick up an edition of this week's Sagittal Independent, as our editor Heather Oney is working right now compiling much more information for you for this week's read. Again, my editor Heather Oney is working on a report with more details coming out in this week's edition of the Sagersville Independent. Just more numbers for her to crunch. We hope you pick that up and make it a must read. I'll be right back. We'll wrap up the show with a lot after this. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment. And for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. 
Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years, Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. You're going to absolutely fall in love with all the new arrivals at the seasonal shop from all the autumn colors and styles in ladies designs shoes and accessories charlie page mud pie you know the name brands to jewelry simply southern natural life caps cups and more to rooms of home decor and all you'll need to decorate for the fall and halloween seasons plus everything from coffees to candles but hurry because everything Christmas is already arriving daily and will be out soon and fall will be gone before you know it. At Frazier's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. From there, it's the community calendar. Not one, but a couple of birthdays will begin this evening, followed by, of course, your forecast, which includes more heat and humidity, but a really nice end to the whole thing. Yes, let's start off the calendar with a birthday wish and a happy, happy birthday to Wes Howard. Happy birthday. Now that's Unit 111 and Unit 502 with the Gulf County Rescue Squad and the Bloomington Fire Departments, mind you. And from all of his fellow emergency first responders, as well as his mom and dad and Hunter and Tara, happy birthday wishes go out tonight to Wes Howard. Happy birthday to you. And to a now 15-year-old Caleb Adams with a lot of love, a bunches of lot of love from a lot of family and friends. Happy 15th birthday tonight to Caleb. Caleb Adams, happy 15th to you. Next, a reminder that the Water into Wine Food Pantry is closed tomorrow, but will reopen next Wednesday, October the 9th. Due to the changing of the season, harvest products dwindling in supply, they won't be open tomorrow, but they'll open next Wednesday the 9th, and they hope that you'll be there. They'll have full pantry services resuming then. And also from the Lakefront Church of God, their Fall Harvest Festival is this Saturday with games, gospel music, singing, a silent auction, and more. They hope you'll be there for that as well. The Disabled American Veterans Chapter 15 of McGoffin County invites all veterans, not just DAV, but all veterans from McGoffin and surrounding counties to their regular meeting this Thursday at 6 at the Community Center in Sagersville. Flu shots will be given out by the VA clinic starting at 5. And the District 3 Fire Department's hosting another fish fry. Fish fries, puppies, slaw and a drink, just 7 bucks this coming Monday starting at 5 at the Fire Department. It's a great fundraiser and everyone knows it's a great meal. And this is a great place to let everyone know what you have going on with your calendar announcements and where to wish someone a happy anniversary or happy birthday. All brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. Next, in funeral service announcements for this Tuesday, 42-year-old Mickey Williams is going to be laid to rest tomorrow at 1. Service is beginning at 1 in his honor. He is survived by his wife, Christy, and sons, Christopher and Dylan and Cajun. Visitation is this evening and prior to tomorrow's services, once again, that start at 1 o'clock from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Delilah Patton, 64 of Dotson Branch here in Sagersville, passed away yesterday, survived by her son Larry Lee Fletcher and daughter 
Penny Perkins, also brother Roger Patton and sisters Diana Allen and Colleen Patton. She was preceded in death by her husband Ronnie. Funeral services are going to be Thursday at 1 from the Church of God's Grace in Sagersville. Friends can visit the church after 5 o'clock this evening and all day tomorrow. 71-year-old Pat Reed passed away yesterday. Survived by sons Jerry and Robbie Reed, brothers Gordon Reed, Johnny Reed, and Mitchell Reed, and sisters Georgia Statzer, Beverly Hill, Betty Gay Allen, Dottie Ward, and Francis Allen. Services for Pat Reed are going to be held Saturday morning from the Bethlehem to Calvary Apostolic Church with friends able to visit the church for visitation after 3 o'clock on Friday and any time prior to Saturday's services. In lieu of flowers, the family asks that you please make contributions to the Pat Reed Memorial Fund in care of the McGoffin County Funeral Home. We had another record-setting day today in eastern Kentucky. No surprise there. We've had several in a row and a few more to come. But after this, via a cold front that comes through town and the area late Thursday evening, we're going to take a dip in temps to the tune of about 20 welcome degrees. The about face comes Thursday with a cold front coming through later Thursday night and evening. That will drop us down to the tune of some 20 degrees for daytime highs from Thursday to Friday. But that cold front's not giving us any shower chances, however, right now. Doesn't look to be making any rain whatsoever, but just a big difference temperature-wise. There are a few shower chances in your forecast that I'll get to in just a second, but let's start off with the left of your screen and tonight's low of around 68 degrees. Mostly clear after a record-setting sunny day, mind you. Calm winds becoming southwesterly. Uh, three, four, five miles per hour. Tomorrow's daytime high has bumped up a degree or two to now an expected 95 degrees, sunny and hot, a barely west wind out there, five, six, seven, eight miles an hour at most. Mostly clear, 58 for the end of your Wednesday. Thursday, sunny and hot, another 90-degree day to the tune of about 93, 94. Winds will be kind of calm in the morning Thursday, but then Throughout the afternoon, you'll start to notice them. They'll start to pick up and gust upwards of 10, 20, 21 miles per hour or so as that front rolls through. As it does, it's going to push temperatures down to about 57 for nighttime lows Thursday night, but still under most of clear skies. We're not seeing any showers associated with this cold front right now. Just doesn't have enough to it. Friday, that is going to hold on, though, that cold front. 72 expected for the end of your work week. Mostly clear, though, and sunny, and a low of 59, 49, 49 for your Friday night. And for your weekend and for thereafter, we're stuck in the 70s. No complaints. Saturday, sunny and 78 and 57, partly cloudy that night. Sunday is our next chance, albeit a small one at 20%, but our next chance of some showers. 20%, partly sunny, 78. We go down via another front on your Monday of next week, back down to 72 with a little better chance of some showers at 30%. Still partly sunny, still in the low to mid 70s on your Tuesday. Well, before I leave you, let me say this. Starting on tomorrow night's program, we'll be covering a fundraising event last night and meet and greet. We got to speak with, of course, Democratic Governor candidate Andy Bashir, as well as Rocky Atkins, Greg Stumbo, a candidate for Attorney General, was there, a host of other officials, and we'll hear from some of those people on the next report that I have for you on tomorrow night's program. So we hope you're here for that, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Good night, and thanks for watching.